right, because you're not calling me from anywhere close by. You're calling me all the way from Australia. I am indeed, mate. I'm sitting in Darwin in North Australia, which is uh, on the doorstep of Arnhem Land, where we made the movie. And um, where are you? I'm in uh, Central California, smack dab the center of California. There's a, okay. there's a small town called Madeira. If you put your okay. finger right in the middle of California, that's where I am. All right. Good on you. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Nice to be talking to you. Likewise. I, I'm very excited to talk to you about, and we're here obviously to talk about your uh, featured directorial debut with High Ground. How's that feel? Yeah, good. Look, I, I have made another movie called Younger Boy in Arnhem Land. So it's okay. not actually my first, first film, but um, no, definitely uh, taken me 20 years to get this one out. It's been a, a massive journey, an incredible journey, not only for myself, but for many, many families right across Arnhem Land. And, um, you know, very proud that we, we got there and, and it's, it's now, now on the screen. So it's been a, been a long process. Amazing. Can, can you tell us a little bit about some of the culture that we're going to see in the film? Yeah, sure. Well, look, in it, in it, essentially, I mean, the most beautiful thing about Indigenous culture here in Australia, I mean, we've been working with the Yungu and the Binning people in North Australia, East and West Arnhem Land. I don't know if you know that where that is, but it's one of the last great wildernesses left on Earth. But um, Yungu and Binning people have a, a connect. It's the oldest living culture left on Earth. And it's always been the oldest living human culture on earth. And um, the knowledge systems, the, the song lines, the art, the dance, the ceremonies, and everything that goes with that are the most ancient human connection left on the planet. And to be able to be immersed and to work with, with Yungu on this, who are my dear friends, I grew up out there as a kid. Um, it's been my life experience to, to, to work and to play and to have listened and learnt um, about this culture and these people who um, I feel immensely connected to because ultimately we are all human and yes. we all are connected to this earth and this planet and they are part of it as we are, but they celebrate it, they live it, they love it. It is their dance, it is their song, it's their reality, it's their dreaming. And uh, it's a great shame that uh, right across the world we haven't embraced Indigenous knowledge and culture as part of uh, the system, so to speak, and um, the earth and ourselves would be much better off for that. How do you, how do you approach a, a tribe, a, a group of, of a culture like this and tell them you want to make a film that really includes them? Do you, do you share the script with them first? Is there somebody specific you talk to? Is it like a council meeting that you, that you have to attend? How does, how does that process work okay so a very different process with 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 this film because as i say I've, I've grown up there the executive producers the producers on the film the actors in the film are my my friends i was adopted okay. into their families so the script process and the creation process of the story obviously working very closely with my my dear dear friend chris the writer we just 20 years traveled across sat down on the ground, listened, learned, sang um, with Widiana, who's a ceremonial leader, producer on the film, one of my oldest friends. And we really just extracted this story from the many, many, many stories that are, that, that are out there about what, what's happened. Um, so it's a, an inspiration from, from true character, true history. Um, massacres took place right across this land. There were heroic characters who stood up and fought for this country right across. And it's the great untold story of Australia, um, as it is in so many places. But, you know, it is the oldest living culture on earth. And this story kind of came through it and is, is part of a process of, of both ways learning and, and connection, a true collaboration, really. It wasn't like we just sort of randomly came up with a story and, yep, let's go make this and talk to the people. It is from the people. Um, created with the people and by the people. And um, it's, a, it's a beautiful ownership in that way for all of us. You, you have a line that you, you give in a statement that says the film as hard is about frontier encounter, encounters and missed opportunities. I yeah. really like that because right off the bat, it, it just seems like a lot of things could have gone differently with a little bit of better communication. Yeah, no, 100%. And, that, and that's, you know, we look at that from both sides. You know, there were mistakes made on both sides, misunderstandings on both sides, flawed characters on both sides. This is a, a kind of 
a, 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 a look from two perspectives. We sort of, obviously, Gujok, the young uh, binning man, warrior, is it's about his journey to his journey to identify and reconnect with his roots and refine who he was as a person, being the, the lone survivor, uh, without saying too much. But um, uh, yes, missed opportunities everywhere. And we don't try and sort of come into the story in a way where we're being judgmental. It's open. It's about creating a piece of immersive entertainment where you're taken on a ride, you're, you're, you're put on country. It, life is all around you through the, through the, with the soundtrack. There's no music in the film as such. It's more about um, the, the, the creatures, the creeks of, of Mother Earth and the, the song lines themselves. Um, which are deeply connected to country. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully it's a ride and you come out the other end and it makes you rethink about life and what it means to be human and who we are or really, you know, it's good to be vulnerable. It's good to kind of open your heart to a, a new way of thinking. I mean, all this stuff should really be, you know, the cultural, some of this, the, the language, the knowledge, it's stuff we should have been learning at school. It should be part of who we all are. It's such incredible deep knowledge that we've just, avoided we've just swept it under the carpet we fucking destroyed it we've killed it we've massacred it we've murdered we haven't respected it which means we ultimately haven't been respecting ourselves and um right where we all live which is planet earth and it's interesting because it seems to be a story that can be told continent to continent to continent with, with yeah. different people i, I think very very much so I mean, say no more about the, you know, the the, the, the terrible story in, in your country there with the Indians. I mean, I've travelled with Yoti Indi, which is a was a very famous uh, Yungu band from Arnhem Land, uh, right through and across America. And it was beautiful to see how the band members connected with, you know, Indian people over there, the various tribes and chiefs and elders and stuff. There's a beautiful connections and stories that they shared. And... Um, Absolutely. It's a, um, oh, dear me, what can I say? It's terrible to even think that genocide is still actually taking place. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I want to talk about something you brought up, which I totally loved about the film. As a matter of fact, I think I closed my eyes a couple of times, is the sounds that, that you chose. You mentioned no soundtrack, but you just let all those natural sounds uh, play out. And, and there are some scenes where it, it's just almost wilderness. It's just some of the characters going through the land. But so many sounds, so many distinct sounds that you can almost make out of what they are. And then you maybe pan to them. Uh, the sound of the wind, the grass, the trees, the animals. Um, can you need to talk about capturing that and, and just really immersing the audience in the sounds of Australia. Yeah, well, look, as I say, um, you know, young and binning people, um, they don't see themselves as disconnected from that. They are that. They listen to it. They sing it. They read it. They talk it. It's within their language. I mean, the old people used to be able to walk through country and actually understand what birds were talking about and to be able to speak back. I mean, it's unbelievable stuff. I've seen that happen with an old man when I was when I was very, very young, walking behind him and the way he was communicating with the crows, who are the great messengers of the bush. And... Um, there's just no disconnection there. So it was about trying to really tell a story with that perspective in mind, that reality in mind, and to, 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 to kind of place the storytelling within that world and um, to participate in it as you're on the journey. And um, uh, that's the approach we took, and it was a, a natural and obvious way to do it because that, that's the sort of way this thing has been birthed and it is what it is um i don't see how it could have really been anything anything else if we were you know trying to tell the truth about what we're saying here and what we're, we're trying to what we're all grappling with can you, can you talk a little bit about uh jacob jr i'm um, hopefully i don't butcher this Nyingle. Yeah. His, beautifully his, uh... said. yep jacob jr Nyingle. he's the lead actor he plays a part of gujuk um gujuk is a totem name for hawk um, again, there's that perspective on the world that we see through so the flight of the, the, the hawk and, and good joke on country over country connected to, to that character. But beautiful story about Jacob. He's never acted before in his life. And 25 years ago plus, I sat down with his grandfather in Arnhem Land, old man Jacob wow. Nangle, <coughs> and had ads, and when another old man called old man Bill Naji 
And I spoke to those old men about the idea of a film um, that kind of tackled the resistance and that, and, and that whole big untold story. And both of those men said, we must do this. You have access. We will go to all the, the, the sacred places, special places. Country will help us tell the story. The ancestors will help us tell that story. It has to be told. And just leaping forward, both of those beautiful, powerful men who were national treasures in this country um, have passed away. But during the course of the making of the film, Jacob Jr. was born. Um, he grew up. Uh, I had never met him. And then here I am 25 years later, cruising across Arnhem Land, screen testing hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of young men and, and women to, to be players in the film. And I meet and I connect with Jacob and there he is. He puts a spear to my neck and threatens me on screen because <laughs> that was part of the improvisation we'd done. I took one look into his eyes and they just said, you're the one. And he was the grandson of that old man. So it's almost like he passed passed him on to me to to play the lead actor in this film. It's a, it's a truly beautiful songline reality. It's uh, very special, and um, I didn't actually know that at the time that that's exactly who he was. But yep, it's um, grandson of that old man. He put him right there up front. That's an amazing story. It mm. makes gives your film all that much more power. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much so much for the wonderful film, and uh, we hope to see you again. Oh, look, an absolute pleasure. I hope hope people over there enjoy it. It's been lovely talking to you, and um, and and thank you very much for your support. Fantastic. Absolutely. Have a good one. You too, mate.